I just finished modifying this workbench from Harbor Freight. So I've got do dog holes evenly spaced throughout the entire table. And that way I've got these uh, 90s I can put anywhere on my table. It doesn't matter where they're at. These things will go in anywhere. And then I can have something to clamp to. Same with the uh, little straight bars here. Now, don't worry about it. These things are 3D printed. I'll put a link to a Thingiverse so that you can pick these up if you space yours the same as mine. And if you have any additional uh, jigs or dogs you want, put a comment down there and I can quickly design these. It's no big deal and throw them up on Thingiverse because if one person wants them, somebody else will probably want them too. Um, now, these are just prototypes I had printed up to make sure my spacing was proper. And uh, I'm going to make some of these a little taller so that uh, maybe a little beefier so I can actually clamp boards to them. And then we've got the uh, dovetail grooves that go throughout the table. So we got our sideways clamping. We've got our clamping down and I'm going to make some little uh, uh, quick blocks. And what I did is I used this Miles Craft drill guide. It was about $25 and this goes up and down. You hook your drill onto it. I use the four center bit. A lot of people use the paddle bits. Paddle bits are quicker, but I find with this wood is very brittle and I wanted nice smooth holes and didn't want any chip out. So it really wasn't that hard. Uh, took my time and uh, did have to resharpen it a bit. Uh, no big deal with that. Just a quick little, you know, doesn't have to be perfect. Um, just a little small jeweler's file. Um, but we got this here. And then what I've done is I also put the file for this little plate up here. This plate here, you take out the little rubber feet and it fits perfectly into the Miles Craft jig. And then I have a little quarter inch that fits perfectly into pegboard. Now you place your pegboard and you can use this. I'll probably throw up a separate video showing how you can use this to evenly space anything, anywhere with a piece of pegboard. But I was able to use the pegboard and come through here and get these all spaced exactly the same. And these are all at exactly 90 degree angles to each other. So stick around and we'll get this built together. So the first thing I had to do was come over here to the original dog holes and fill them with some epoxy. I just throw a little dye in there because I had it. It doesn't have to have the dye, but um, go ahead, fill those up and then send them down flush after it cures. Then you got these screws around the edge. You want to make sure to pull the screws out that are going to be where your dog holes are grilled at or where you're going to run the grooves for the dovetail clamps because you can hit those and first or second hole I uh, put in, I hit one of them, uh, which is why I had to resharpen my bit. It just kind of dulled it up pretty good, but still not a big deal. Go ahead, get those uh, holes filled in, sand it down nice and flush, and then we're ready to move on. So now we want to lay out where we're going to drill the dog holes at. I went ahead and I figured at 60 inches, I'm going to go six inches apart. So we're going to split the difference and put our row three inches from the edge. So I went ahead and marked my three inches and then they're also going to come out to be one inch from the edge this way because it's uh, 20 inches wide on this little table. And so I marked my line up here. Then I put my pegboard on the lines and that way I could see just where it was. This particular little table is not completely square, but I was able to decide where I wanted to line up uh, the holes at and which way I want it because I wanted all my holes to be at exactly 90 which is where I could have used a edge guide. And if I had used the edge guide because the table itself wasn't completely flat, I may or may not would have gotten these all spaced out properly uh, and square to each other. So we go ahead and we laid that out. And then once I got it laid out, because I know I am going to route in the dovetail grooves uh, in between these holes, so by going six inches, I've got five dots in between. The center dot is going to be exactly in the middle. I went ahead and marked that dot and put a screw, pre-drilled, and then put a little screw in because I knew that whenever I ran the router for the groove, that that would go right where the screw was and you would not be able to see a hole in the table. After that, I went ahead and marked the holes that I will be drilling through for my dog holes. When you have this pegboard up there and you're looking down at all these holes, it's very easy to get off, uh, which I actually did on one of the holes. Um, I was distracted, got caught out of the shop for a few minutes. When I came back in, I thought that I was where I was, but I wasn't. 
So just go ahead and uh, try to mark where the uh, holes are that you're going to drill just to help keep you from getting off on one. After that, I went back in the hole in the center, which is three over from the holes that I'm going to drill. And around the edge, I filled in those. I got a little sharp point marker here and uh, put in a dot. And that way I know exactly where my groove is going to be for the dovetail clamp. And I know that it's going to be properly spaced exactly halfway in between and will be 90 to everything else. Now, this is the most time consuming part of the entire build, which really didn't take that long. I uh, had this little jig here, so I didn't have to think about my space. And I just went down and started drilling. I started out with my drilling slow because you're only supposed to run about 500 RPM somewhere so between five and 600. And so in first gear, I think this drill runs about 540. But I, uh, and it would only take uh, just under a minute to drill a hole at that slow speed, but the bit never heated up or anything. After I dulled the bit by hitting a screw, I went ahead and kicked it into high gear. And then I was able to drill a hole in about 15 seconds, 30 seconds. Um, so it didn't take that long to get all the 60 holes, less than an hour. So my piece of pegboard I had here is only about 48 inches wide and my table is 60 inches wide so i was unable to reach the last few dog holes with the board screwed where it was however since i now have my equally spaced dog holes and this piece of pegboard now has three quarter inch holes already drilled through uh, properly spaced exactly where the dog holes are i was able just to slide it over throw a couple of dogs through the pegboard into the table and then the whole piece of pegboard was slid over and I could use it to drill in for the next set of holes and it would still keep my spacing exactly perfect. So I probably could have edited out this part or not actually videoed it and you would never know but you see how my holes are nice and lined up and then all of a sudden I got this one here that's uh, out of line. That's the one I messed up on, but you know what? It's no big deal. I'm going to go back, drill that one out, and we'll fill the old one with epoxy. No big deal. I'm not for sure if you can see it right here, but the little dots that I put in between my dog holes, I had drew on the table. They're exactly a quarter inch around. Well, I took my router bit, and I lined it up exactly on top of the dot, and then I clamped down my little rail here, which you could use a board, but uh, I have this track off my little track saw. And then I uh, moved over to the other side and set my router bit exactly on top of the dot on the other side. And so now my track is perfectly lined up. And so when my router runs through, it will give me a perfect groove all the way across. I had expected this to take a whole lot longer, but I looked at the timestamp on the video and it actually only took me about 15 minutes to route all these grooves straight through. They do make a bit that you can pre-route uh, a groove and then come back with the dovetail bit. And that way it's not as hard on the dovetail bit. But since this is only 20 inches at a time, it gave the, the bit time to cool off in between. And I didn't want to, one, have to move my track and go through and cut all of the grooves and then come back and try to reline up exactly where I was and not get my groove off in any way. So... I opted, and then I didn't want to have to change my bit between every cut. So I went ahead and opted just to use the dovetail bit and make one pass and cut through. And I had absolutely no issues, as you can see here. And I just took a little block of wood and went on my table saw and cut a couple of grooves so that it would kind of lock into my grooves on my track saw track here. And uh, that thing worked perfectly. You know, no reason to go spend a ton of money on some big uh, fancy jig to hold your router over because just that little block of wood worked perfectly. My small track was not large enough, so I had to go ahead and uh, grab my big track out to do the four or three grooves all the way down. And again, it just put it in one pass and the thing worked perfect. And so now I've got nice straight grooves all the way down and everything is 100% on a 90 to each other and is exactly spaced the same. After I ran my groove through there, 
I went ahead and took the dovetail clamp and ran it through all the grooves just to make sure that everything came out perfectly. As you can see right here, I'm having a little area where it's getting stuck. And I found that, I guess, because I'm going with the grain, it made a couple of little rough spots. Because uh, when I went crossways, all of uh, the grooves were perfect. And it was just a couple of spots on the long grooves. So, so that's not really a big deal. All I did was took a uh, piece of uh, hardwood, cut it down to about a quarter inch a long stick, wrapped a piece of sandpaper around it. Uh, that way I could kind of angle it back up in there and just uh, ran this with some 150. And it didn't take me 60 seconds probably. And I had all those little rough spots uh, knocked off. And then the little jig or the clamp slid perfectly throughout every groove. So anytime I use this little micro jig uh, dovetail system with the router bit, I always like to put a coat of this Danish oil on uh, whatever I cut the grooves in. Because Danish oil actually will go into the wood fibers and harden up and makes it a little bit stronger. So I just went ahead, wiped on some of this Danish oil. I got a little brush, kind of got it up inside the grooves the best I could. Let that set overnight and dry it up. And then I will go ahead and put the wax finish on there. I always put wax on all my tables and because I'm really bad about dropping glue everywhere. And I don't worry about putting stuff down to protect the table. If you got a good wax coat on it, after it dries, it'll just pop right up. As you can see, this is my table saw I'm sitting at. Uh, I have these tables. I got two of them set up as my outfeed tables because of the micro jig router bit. The way it rounds over the edge of the dovetail grooves, don't really have a problem with the boards catching. They slide pretty straight across the uh, table there. And, you know, with the different dogs I've got made up so far, um, I can see the potential of tons and tons of ways to glue things up and just a whole nother level of functionality in the shop. So if you like this, let me know. If you think that there's an issue, let me know because I'm always looking for improvement. And thank you once again for joining me.